Hey guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to cover some interview questions on Java 8 short circuit operations. So let's get started. Now, what are short circuit operations? So in Java 8, short circuit operations are just like Boolean short circuit evaluations in Java. Now you'll ask me what were those Boolean short circuit evaluations in Java? So let's see with an example here. Now suppose in Java, I had an if condition and if condition evaluates to say if 10 is greater than 5 and and if 5 is greater than 3. If this is the case, then do something. So this is a Java simple expression. So this is a Boolean expression which will either evaluate to true or false and on based of that, the if condition, if it is true, will execute these statements or if, if it evaluates to false, it will not evaluate this expression. In this case, if 10, it, it sees if 10 is greater than 5. Yes, it is greater than 5. So it becomes true. But it's not just enough. Then it has to see all the parameters apart from just the first one, all the conditions in the end end one. So is 5 also greater than 3? Yes, it is true. If both the conditions evaluates to true, then the output is true. So how does this evaluate? So if true and then true, then it becomes true. If true and second evaluates to false, the whole output is false. If first is false and if this is true or this is false, it doesn't matter. The output will remain false because at the first place it becomes false. So if the condition is opposite, 10 less than 5. So is 10 less than 5? No. So it's it's false. So it what Java compiler will do is it will not evaluate any further condition. So all the conditions after this will be ignored by compiler as soon as it gets as false as the first parameter in end-end condition. So as soon as it gets false, the second or the third and the fourth operands doesn't even matter. So in this case, you will always get false. So this is short circuited and hence it is not evaluated. So what is the benefit in doing this with Java compiler? Java compiler does not need to evaluate this and this and any n number of conditions here. At the first place itself, it gets its result and it will not evaluate this if block. Hence, it saves the compiler time. So saves time, increase performance and many more things. So this was the advantage of short circuiting. So not just this was the operation that we used to have for the short circuit. We have one more operation, right? And the operation is or condition. So if 10 is greater than 5 or 5 is greater than 3. In this case, do something. What if this is true? So if the first condition is true, the rest of the part is neglected by a compiler. Why? Because or condition says if the first is true or the second is true in any of the case, either of the case, you have to execute the code in the if block. In boolean short circuit logic, for example, the first boolean, second boolean, if first boolean is false, then remaining part is ignored because of and operation. The operation is short circuited. Now, because now, similar in the case of first boolean or second boolean, if first boolean itself is true, remaining part is short circuited because the remaining evaluation will be redundant. It will be just the same result because the first one is true. Well, why to go to next one and see if it is false or true? If first is true, rest everything will be short circuited. In Java 8 string short circuit operation, this is not just limited to boolean types. There are predefined short circuit operations. And what are these short circuit operations? There is an intermediate and terminal operation. So we have seen in Java 8, we had two types of operations. The first one was intermediate. Second was terminal. What were intermediate and what were terminal operations? We have already covered this in real depth and the link to the uh, video is given in the description below. Just for the revision purpose, I'll just reciprocate it once. So intermediate operations were like filter, map. And these always returns you stream object. And these were lazy loaded. They were not executed and the result is not returned until the terminal operation is performed on the stream. So example is for each, collect, min, max and many more. So these were two type of operations we had to perform on stream. That is terminal and the intermediate one. Now Java 8 short circuit operations are, are in both types. So intermediate we have an example of limit. I'll cover this in a minute. So limit is intermediate one and find first, find any, any match, all match and none match. These are terminal operations. I'll show you why these are short circuited and how do they work in short circuit in Java 8. So let's get started with first the intermediate one. 
Now intermediate one is just one uh, method that is limit. This method takes one argument and returns a stream. So I already told you what does intermediate returns. Intermediate always returns you a stream object. It returns you stream of no more than n elements and n is going as an argument where n is the number of elements the stream should be limited to and this function returns a new stream as an output. So before going into the more theoretical part let's come quickly see the demonstration part. So this is the REST API demo. We have already covered this while doing the CRUD operations. I have added the dev tool so that we don't have to restart it again and again. In this example, I'm going to take an example of find all. So what does find all returns you? It returns you list of employees. And how many employees do we have? So here we have list of five employees. The ID is one to five and name as code decode updated one, updated two, code and decode. And the fifth one is null. If I go to, uh, to repository and say find all, there will be list of five employees to me. Now I don't want five employees. I want to limit it only to two or three. So what should I do? So uh, let me just quickly run it and see what is the current result and show you all the five right now. The service, uh, server is running for me currently and with find all I have a result and result has five, the list of five employees. It goes as first as code decode updated one, updated two, code, decode and null is the name. So these were the five ones for me. Now what if I want to just limit it to two or three elements. I don't want more of them. The find all will give me a list. What I can do on a list, I can open a stream. As soon as you open a stream, what you can do, I just want to limit it to only three employees or I just want to limit it to only two employees. Now, this is an intermediate operation. This is going to return you a stream object. So this will return you a stream object. You have to put some terminal operator so that you will be able to evaluate the limit. So collectors dot to list. What will it return you? It will ret still return you list of employees. And let's see now if I hit it. So I should not get all the five of them. I should just get two of them. So see my operation is short circuited. So it is a stream. So it says, okay, let me get the first one. Let me get the second one, but as soon as your limit reaches two, it will reject all of them and it will be short circuited and just two will be written back to you. So in Java 8 limit method retrieves only the first n objects in the setting the maximum size and ignores the remaining values after size of n. So in our case, our size was two. So only first two objects were returned and rest remaining all the three items were rejected. The return type is stream of object and that is why I have to put collect and collect it as a list as a terminal operator because this is an intermediate one. As soon as limit reaches the maximum number of item that is two in our case, it doesn't consume any more item and simply returns the resulting stream. So here, as soon as two items of employees are reached, all the remaining three are rejected and hence just the size of two is returned to the collectors to collect in any format you want. So this is why we say that limit is a short circuit operation. All the five elements of the stream are not executed. Just the two of them are executed. Rest all the three are ignored and hence it is short circuited. Limit returns first n elements and not just any n elements. So this is very important. This is very important from interview perspective. The limit operation returns you first n elements and not any of the n elements. So if you have here five of the operations, you will not get null and code as an output when you limit it with two. It will just return you first two. So that is why limit is the sequential operation and it returns you first n elements, that is two in our case, in the n counter order, that is in sequential order and not just any random order. So this was the limit operation. It was an intermediate operation. It is good choice when you're working on infinite stream or infinite value. So limit is invoked after calling a terminal operation such as count or collect. So I've already told you with this, since this is an intermediate operation, terminal operation is required because this is lazy loaded. This returns a stream of elements with size or maximum limit given. In our case, we have given it as two. This works well with sequential streams and it is not suggested to par parallel streams or for the larger higher size limit. The max size cannot be negative. What if I give this as minus two rather than two? 
इट विल गिव यू इलीगल आर्ग्यूमेंट एक्सेप्शन सो इट विल दिस इज अ रन टाइम एक्सेप्शन इट्स नॉट कंपाइल टाइम सो इफ आई नाउ ट्राई टू हिट इट इट विल गिव यू एन एक्सेप्शन इट सेज इलीगल आर्ग्यूमेंट एक्सेप्शन this is how i proved you that the max size cannot be negative if the interviewer ask you what if the if you try to limit it at minus 2 it will give you a legal argument exception now this was all about the intermediate one now what are the sh terminal short circuit methods we have the terminal short circuit methods we have is find first so what it does is it goes and find any of the first element which matches your condition so before going to the theory let's quickly see in the demo part so this is your list of employees you are going to open a stream to it you have each and every object in this stream of employee i am going to filter it with some condition emp such that emp dot get name on some condition and then i will do like uh, find first dot find first now this is since it's a terminal operation it does not need any kind of chaining terminal operations because only one terminal operation is allowed so we don't want to collect it or do something and since it is going to return just one employee you should not have the list of employees here just one employee is going to be returned to you and here also we are going to change it to just one employee and i'm going to filter out only those employees whose name contains code in the name so does any of so this any of my employees name contains code in it so let's see yes there were three names which contains code in it that is 1 2 and 3 now it says find the first one who contains name as code so what should be the first one that should be returned that is code decode updated one but find first returns you an optional so what you need to do is you need to do get now let's see is there any find first employee which returns you this So yes the first one is code decode updated one so we had three values which contains code that is code decode updated one code decode updated two and third is code simple simple code so with this terminal operation find first what it does is it goes and navigates to each and every of the stream object so it goes first with in the sequence order it goes code decode updated one and check does the name contain code yes it does so all the 2 3 4 5 all of these stream elements are short circuited and with the first element itself you get your response in your employee in return back to your client now suppose these were just five rows what if i had hundreds and thousands of rows that you have to check then in that case these short circuit operations increases your performance because it doesn't have to go to all thousands and thousands of rows the very first row returns you the true and it returns you the object so this is find first for you so the find first return the very first element wrapped in the optional object so what we did was we had to do get in the case of optional object in the stream before traversing the others one the terminal operation terminated on finding the very first element and hence the rest are short circuited and hence this is short circuit operation okay now the next short circuit operation is find any so what is the difference between find first and find any so it returns you an optional instance which wraps only and only one element of the stream so even find first used to have written me only one and one element the first one so find first behave uh, find first operation as per the documentation in java the behavior of this expression is explicitly non deterministic what does that mean you cannot determinately say that yes you are going to return as a result as code decode updated one there can be chances you can get code decode updated two or code so there were three so here there were three rows code decode one updated two and code so any of the three can return if you use find any this is to allow maximum performance in parallel operation the cost is that multiplied of invocation of the same resource may not return the same result so it's explicitly say you if you run it multiple times you are not going to get the same result and hence it is not idempotent in nature so we know what idempotent is idempotent is which when operated multiple times give you same result it doesn't give you same result and hence you can say the difference between find 
any and find first is find first is idempotent in nature this is not idempotent in nature if you want to get a stable result then always use find first rather than find any so find any in here it is going to give you code up, decode updated one because it is a sequential order what if i use a parallel stream see i have used a parallel stream here and what is the response i got here as id 3 code as the output so this is the third one this is the third row which got as an output so this is the feature of find any so if you would have used find first here this might not have been the case find first is always going to return you the very first in the sequential order so this is the find first result and that was your find any result. So this is a very big difference between the find first and find any. You will find this difference only in only cases when you use the parallel streams. Now for sequential stream, there won't be any difference between find first and find any. I have shown you just now. But for parallel stream, find any will return any element rather than waiting for the first element. So this is a very big difference between find first and find any. This is a very important in, from the interview perspective. Now the third one is um, any match. And this is going to return your Boolean condition. So on basis of this Boolean condition, you can evaluate your further steps. So there are multiple cases where you need to find any, if any of these matches, then only proceed with your business logic else, stop then and there. So this is to test whether any element matches the provided predicate. So we are going to pass a predicate here. So let's quickly see the demo first. Now from repo, find all the elements and stream it out. And rather than filtering and using terminal operation, you don't need any kind of intermediate operation right now. Rather, you can use any match and pass your condition here itself. So any match employee such that employee dot get name dot contains code. If it does, return you boolean. Return this boolean as true and false. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is find all and while you're doing find all, stream it up. So you have in stream five objects. Now in these five objects, find any employee whose name contains code. So what it does is it goes in all the five and it says, okay, the first one itself contains code. If that is the case, it finds any who contains code, return it as true and rest all the four records are not going to be evaluated now there must have been like thousands and thousands of rows if the first itself return you true your performance increases a very good extent because all the rest and thousands and thousands of rows are not going to be evaluated in your stream now let's see and run it it should get true so you you are getting true and hence this is a short circuit operation why because that this is a terminal method which will return you as soon as it finds the match and in our case it find the match with employee whose name is code as the first one itself and hence it returns you and and rest of the four rows are not going to traverse at all so that was about any match now all match now this is as good as any match was as good as or condition the first one is evaluated true true it returns you the response now here it tests whether all the elements should match the predicate now how will it will be short circuited what if the first element itself doesn't match your condition and it says it all should match and this is as good as and and operation. This was as good as or operation. Now this is as good as and and operation. So if the first one is false, rest all will be redundant and hence will be short circuited. So let's see the demo all match. The predicate whose employee's name contains new suppose and it will return you false. Why? Because it goes to the first one, it says, does it, it should, all of them should match. So does it contains new? No, it doesn't. So the first one itself says, my name does not contains new. And it says every, every name should have new in it. It doesn't. It, so the first one it plays, it returns you new false and it returns you false in the postman itself. So hence the, all the four were short circuited. Now it says none matches. This is opposite of all matches. It says test whether no element of the stream match the provided predicate. It may return early if the false result when any element matches the predicate. 
So none matches. Let's see the demo. None match says no one should match my condition. If I give you code, the first one itself is the code. So it says the first one matched. So it says no, none of you should match. So the, since the first one matched, it will give you false in the first place. So let's see if this works. Yes, it works with a false condition. Why? Because the first one matched. So as soon as the first one matched, all of these remaining rows are neglected. So this was all about the terminal and non-terminal operations or the intermediate operations. I have few more things to cover on Java 8 optional because it is very important from the interview perspective. So the way how you can create the optional, the way how you can see whether the value is present and all the operations on op optional you can do. But if you want me to cover optional in the next video, just let me know in the comment section. Then only I will cover Java 8 optional interview questions for you. Thank you.